I want to get Dr. Shamika Ravi, who works closely with the government of the day, to respond to some of this. One, the assertion that a lot of uh, economists seem to have, or some economists seem to have, that the, that the government is pa painting a rosier picture than the reality, and that uh, India Inc., for various reasons, may say certain things in public, but look at their private investment numbers. Those numbers tell their own story. So don't go by what they're saying, see by what their balance sheets are saying in terms of how much they're investing. Dr. Ravi. So first of all, thank you for this opportunity. It's always wonderful to be back at this forum. Um, now, the way Arvind and I look at the world and the economy are very different. He is a macroeconomist. He looks at uh, macro indicators. I really go to the economy with a lens. And I'm a micro, I'm an applied microeconomist. If you look at the FDI numbers that were put up, they were as a percentage of the GDP. Now, GDP, your GDP is, you are the major, fastest major economy, and you have remained so for some time now. So there are two variables that are in that. It's the FDI and then there is the GDP, right? And you're really looking at the share of that. What has been done right now, it is like an accounting exercise, and I think that's valuable in itself, but I think an economic insight would be to really go a little deeper into that to figure out, are we becoming more efficient at using the FDI, perhaps? Because it's been now many years, many decades of, uh, uh, you know, these flows. So I think you need a little more nuanced sort of a look into some of this to understand what is happening to the FDI and the efficiency of the FDI that is coming into the economy. That's number one. As far as the, the private investments are concerned, you see, I think it's very important to be honest amongst each other that, you know, in some ways, the state of India, by which I mean the government, the judiciary, et cetera, et cetera, because it takes all. Everyone has to play ball for this growth story and, uh, you know, this, this to unfold. Since 2012, you have had such tremendous shocks in the form of whether it was the retrospective tax, whether it was institutions basically annulling allocations which were legit as well as illegal, but even legit ones after 20 years of growth, these, I don't know if one recognizes that these are body blows to private confidence. And it has taken us about a decade. You are beginning to see a growth in the last few quarters in private investment. But that's, that is the long-term impact of some of these absolutely uh, disastrous policies that we witnessed uh, under the UPA2 regime, unfortunately, which is why, you know, we look at measures which are irrefutable, Rahul. Just me, I'm not going to argue base year kya hai, deflator me we are going to quibble. I'm going to therefore measure and look at, which is what I have been publishing, look at satellite data, daytime satellite data. Okay, so let's do that. So we worked with Dr. Ravi's office, and there are two visualizations we'll show you. One is the uh, annualized growth rate of built-up surfaces across parliamentary constituencies. So you see what happened from 2010 to 2015, and then you will see what happened from 15 to 20. So what this argues is wherever the, uh, wherever the color is darker, the darker suggests that the growth of built-up surface areas is higher. The lighter no, color... No, no, Rahul, you have, uh, you have the luxury of me being here. Let me explain my research. You see, this is, this is daytime satellite image at a resolution of 10 meter into 10 meter. Can you imagine how accurate it is? It's not Indian data. It's not government of India's data. This is the European Commission having spent billions of dollars. This data is now put up. And you have this at the parliamentary constituency because that is what we focused on. But you have it also at a sub-district level. What you're seeing is, and this is built-up area, built-up area is an incredibly useful proxy or an indicator to look at what is the economic activity at a ground level. And built-up surface is not just infrastructure, by the way, which is the government side of the story. This is residential, this is non-residential, this is all kinds of construction and building that is happening, all kinds of building. What you notice, and these are every five years, is you have an 18% increase in this measure or economic activity since 15, right? In fact, if you compare this with UPA 1, because you can go back, these are five yearly epochs, you're seeing that that difference is almost 30%. But beyond just looking at the average, because all India statistics that macroeconomists look at, it's a national GDP, national FDI, I'm telling you, where is the growth happening? So this kind of an approach to economy and so I'm really I'm curious now to get Dr. Subramanian to respond to it because the argument that's playing out here, one is a micro lens at what's happening on the ground, the other is a more macro 30,000 uh, feet view. Now, 
she spoke of efficiency, that whatever money is coming in internationally is used more efficiently with lesser uh, corruption and whatever the government is also spending is more efficiently and therefore the multiplier effect is higher. The second is that look at, for example, and she's just given one data point about, say, built-up areas, which was on the ground, there is economic activity at a speed higher than at any time in the past, Dr. Subhani. Uh, yeah, uh, f firstly, you know, I don't want to turn it into a no. kind of a dry uh, kind of academic debate that may not be very interesting for the audience. Uh, I, I mean, just to look at all this in terms of parliamentary constituencies is a bit odd for me because, you know, uh, change takes place as a result of actions by the central government, by the state government, and so on. So it, to make the parliamentary constituency, it's as if saying that all the relevant policy actions are being taken at the constituency level, when in fact that's you know, kind of not the case, you know, these things. Second, I think, is that even if I'm reading your number right for the, uh, the second, uh, for the growth rate for, for 2015 to 2020, it's something like three, three and a half percent per year. That's not what was being claimed, seven, eight percent. And the third thing I, I would really urge all of us is that, you know, I, I don't want to get into this, you know, UPA did this, NDA did this, because as I wrote in a piece recently, that whatever the achievements and the failures we've had over the last 10, 15 years are cumulative and bipartisan. You know, uh, anything that we've done, you know, take for example, uh, the jam trinity for which this government deserves a lot of credit. I mean, the seeds were sowed earlier in the previous government. Uh, and I can go on and on. I think it's not very interesting to say, you know, this happened in this point and that happened and therefore we get into political bickering uh, rather than saying, what does the government need? You know, are we on the right path? What are the deficiencies and so on? <laughs>